Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to have a little singing tonight. And uh, Miss Kayla, Miss Samantha, Miss Jessica, okay. we pray for them uh, as they sing. We'll see what the Lord has for us. <laughs> Amen. All right.
had numerous, numerous people come to me and say, my God, you hit the nail on the head, you helped me. Of course, I know they mean the Lord. I'm just trying to do what the Lord tells me. I know that. Uh, but I said that to say this, that the message, generally speaking, will be beneficial to you. Amen. If you don't need it tonight, you will need it down the road. Amen. And uh, obviously somebody needs it tonight, or else the Lord would not have burdened me to preach it. And so we'll, we'll look at verse, Luke chapter number 6, verse number 22. Mm -hmm. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. That's a tough way to start. Yeah. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for, behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Skip down to verse 26. Woe unto you, when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Amen. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Look at verse 29. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take, to, to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not of thee. And as ye would, and as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that hate them, uh, those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Amen. Father, tonight we're thankful and grateful to be back in church. Thank you for your kindnesses and generosities toward us. Thank you for another opportunity to stand. Lord, our prayer is tonight that you would help your unprofitable servant. Lord, in this flesh there is no good thing. I can't do nothing. And so, Lord, in and of myself, I'm helpless and hopeless. <clears throat> Lord, I need that divine touch. I pray you'd speak into the hearts of your people. Lord, may you be glorified. May you help us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. In our text, we find the Lord is dealing with enemies. He says some very interesting things concerning our enemies and our behavior toward them. Amen. I want to point just a couple of things out on the way to the message uh, through my introduction. I'd like to say this first of all. Everyone will have enemies if they live for God properly. Yeah. In verse 22, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil. Notice the last statement. For the Son of Man's sake. 
If you live for God and do it right, it's going to produce enemies. The Bible says all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. If you take a stand for righteousness, some people aren't going to like you. But we need to make sure that our enemies are a result of trying to live righteously and not a result because we have done something unrighteous to them. If there are enemies for our stand for the Lord, then the Lord said we're blessed. You realize sometimes those enemies can be our own family. Sometimes our enemies can be other Christians. Sometimes it may be a co-worker. May I say this tonight? Every enemy I've had the last 25 years as a gospel preacher, not one of them has been a lost individual. Every enemy I've ever had uh, since I've been saved has been other Christians. It's not a lost man. It's not a man. It's not the drunkard. It's not the dope addict. That crowd, don't, it don't bother them a bit. Sometimes your enemy can be other Christians. Tonight, regardless of where they come from, if you live for God properly, you're going to have enemies. Tonight, there are people here and you have enemies. Folks have wronged you and hurt you. They've lied on you. Made accusations against you. They've tried to deceive others about you. They've mistreated you. They've mocked you. And to be honest, there's some people that just don't like you. No matter what you do. It is said the only way to avoid having enemies Say nothing, do nothing, have nothing, yeah. or be nothing. That's right. The old uh, proverb that I've heard since I have been uh, saved is this, to live above with the ones we love. Oh, won't that be glory. But to live below with the ones we know, now that's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight, you're going to have enemies if you live properly. Yeah. I want you to notice verse 26. Notice what he said. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Now why would the Lord make that statement? It's almost as if we, He expects us to have enemies. The reason the Lord said woe unto you when all men speak well of you simply means you don't have a moral compass. What that means is when you're with this crowd, you believe what they believe and act like they act and do what they do. But then when you're with a different crowd, you'll believe what they believe, act like they act, and do what they do. And whichever crowd you're with, you will simply uh, mold yourself to fit in with that crowd, and everybody loves you. But if you take a stand and live for God, you're going to have enemies. And listen, he said, whoa, there's something wrong when everybody loves you. And so I want to say secondly, it's a blessing to have him. Look at verse 22. Blessed are ye. God's going to tell you how you're blessed. When, when men shall hate you. <laughs> that don't always seem like a blessing, does it? But the Lord said, you're blessed when you have enemies. Notice the rest of it. And when they shall separate you from their company. You're blessed. I'll be honest, my flesh struggles with that. Yeah. Look at the rest of it. And shall reproach you. That means talk about you and run you down. Notice this. And cast out your name as evil. God said we were blessed when men hate us, separate us, reproach us, and cast out our name as evil. Amen. Look at the next verse. You think, that, you think that one's hard to swallow. Look at the next one. Rejoice ye in that day. He didn't say in two weeks when you prayed all that hard feelings and bitterness out of you. Yeah. He said in the day that they hate you. In the day that they cast out your name as evil. In the day that they reproach you. 
in the day that they separate you from the com from their company, on that day, rejoice. Look at it. Rejoice ye in that day. Not only rejoice, notice this, and leap for joy. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! They hate me. <laughs> Woohoo! They're lying on me. Right. Woohoo! Glory! They're casting my name out as evil. Right. Okay. If you did that, people would think you're nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But I want you to notice. We should be rejoicing in verse 23 and not just rejoicing, but leaping for joy. Well, that doesn't make no sense to me. I, I, I'll be honest, my flesh, I know it's right because Jesus said it. But the last time I heard somebody hated me, the last time I heard some, somebody was casting my name out as evil, the last thing I wanted to do was rejoice. Yeah. Right. I certainly... Did not want to jump for joy. But the Lord said, You ought to, uh, you ought to rejoice. You ought to leap for joy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to wrap my head around. I have yet to preach this where I can just move, just go right through it and never think twice about it. Right. Something in my flesh said, I don't know about that. Yeah. But tonight, according to the Bible, when people hate you, as long as it's for righteousness sake, yeah. as long as it's for being godly and living holy and living separated and living for Jesus, as long as they hate you for that reason, we're to rejoice and leap for joy. Amen. Now, you'll find in the text that the Savior takes great pains to tell us uh, how to take care of our enemies. Look at verse 27. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you. Notice this. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Yeah. Now, you want real Christianity? You want real godliness? You want to be separated from the world? This is one of the tests to see what you've got. Yeah. Look at verse 35. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. May I be honest tonight. This flies in the face of my flesh. I don't want to pray for them. And if I do pray for them, I don't want to pray good for them. Right. Right. Kill them! Amen. I'm just being honest in my flesh. I want to say, God, get them. Yeah. Yeah. When men cast my name out as evil, I don't want to lend to them. I don't want to give to them. Right. I don't want to love them. But tonight, according to the Bible, that's exactly, precisely what you and I are supposed to do. Yeah. Now the question becomes, why would the Lord tell us to love our enemies and pray for them and do good to them? Why would the Lord say we're blessed to have enemies? Right. Seems strange, doesn't it? I mean, that's a strange thing to tell us to love those that hate us. Yeah. In our flesh, we want revenge against our enemies. Yeah. We want to get even. We want payback. But the Lord doesn't say pay them back or get even. Yeah. The Lord tells us to love them and pray for them and do good toward them. Yeah. He tells us we are blessed when we have enemies. Not only are we blessed, He said we ought to rejoice and leap for joy. Now tonight it does seem strange 
until you begin to study your Bible and understand some things about having enemies. Enemies are very important to the believer. We must take great care to obey the Lord concerning our enemies. Let me say this. You need enemies. You need people that don't like you in the Christian life. Tonight, those enemies are essential. Matter of fact, it's so essential that the Lord said this. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. He said, you're in bad, terrible shape when you don't have any. Right. So tonight, why, why would the Lord tell us and take great care to explain to you and I how we are to treat our enemies? Why would the Lord say we're blessed and tell us to rejoice and go on to tell us how to treat our enemies? I dare say this tonight. Uh, it's good to have friends. Thank God for good friends. But I'll say this, I think it's more important to have enemies than friends. Now, I realize that friends are important. And they can help us to be better for Jesus. I thank God for my friends. But our enemies will serve a specific role and fulfill a specific role in your life that a friend never could. I mean, you say, I want everybody to like me. Give up on it. Right. You ain't ice cream. <laughs> you ain't pizza. Right. I worry about folk don't eat ice cream. I worry about folk don't eat pizza. Yeah. Might be a member of Al-Qaeda. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm joking, of course. But tonight, those enemies will serve a very specific role in your life. I want to show you the importance of having enemies. Enemies help you fulfill the will of God and push you to that end. Amen. Enemies are crucial for the believer. Everyone needs enemies. As long as that enemy comes by way of righteousness. Tonight I want to preach on this thought. Take good care of your enemies. You're going to need them. When I think about enemies and the role that enemies play in the life of the believer, we don't get out of the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, before God is explaining to us the importance of having enemies. When we read the story of Joseph in Genesis 37, this is what it says, verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. You'll find that Joseph had enemies. They were his own brethren. You will find those enemies sold him into slavery. That slavery led him to Potiphar's house where he gains another enemy, Potiphar's wife. She hated him for his stand and his refusal to commit adultery. She lies on him. And you'll find that uh, Joseph goes to prison. You'll find from prison he's promoted to the palace. My question for you tonight is this. How did Joseph get to be the right hand of Pharaoh? It all started with his enemies. Right. Yeah. God allowed his enemies to take him, uh, throw him in a pit. Uh, they, uh, he allowed them uh, to sell him into slavery. He allowed Potiphar's wife to lie on him and, and be his enemy. And he allowed him to go to prison. And all of that is in God's plan. It wasn't Joseph's friends that God used to promote Joseph. It was God. It was his enemies that God used. My point is tonight, you better take good care of your enemies because God is going to use them in your life to get you right in the middle of the will of God. Hear me tonight. Enemies are essential. Be good to them. Love them. Pray for them because you're going to need them. Just like Joseph. Joseph, his enemies. It looks like things are bad. It looks like things are going downhill. But when it's all said and done, it was those enemies that God used to get Joseph 
to the throne. Amen. Amen. So much so, Joseph realizes it. And when he confronts his brethren, reveals who he is, in Genesis 50, verse 20, the Bible says this. He's speaking to his brothers. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring it to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. When Joseph realized this great truth that God used his enemies to get him in the perfect will of Almighty God. Amen. Can I say secondly, when I think of David, when you think of David instantly, you think of Goliath. It was Goliath that God used to exalt David yeah. in the eyes of the people of Israel. It was not David's friend. David had a friend named Jonathan, a dear friend that loved David according to the Bible as much as he loved his own soul. He was a dear friend to David. But you realize it wasn't Jonathan that, that uh, the Lord used uh, to, to, uh, to promote David in the eyes of the people. No, sir. It was that nine foot six, uh, uh, mean, hateful, ugly devil, uh, Goliath. It was that one that God used. Uh, had, had Goliath not uh, uh, confronted David, had Goliath not stood up against Israel, David would have remained a nobody. Uh, nobody would have ever heard of it. But God sent an enemy, and God used that enemy uh, to help David and to promote David because he had plans for David. He was going to be the greatest king, earthly king, Israel would ever know. And God used an enemy to promote him and get him where he wanted him. Right. Amen. You move forward in David's life, you'll find that the king of Israel, Saul, turns his back on David, begins to hate him. You will find that Saul chases David all over the nation of Israel. You will find that Saul wants to kill him. You will find that Saul wants to destroy him. And David has done nothing to Saul but Saul's jealousy, Saul's pride. Uh, Saul was worried that David was going to take over the kingdom. He gave no interest or no thought to the fact that it's God who setteth up kings and it's God who removeth kings. And so he begins to attack David. He begins to chase him all over the country. Do you know where most of the book of Psalms is written? It's written in a cave somewhere hiding from King Saul. And it's there where he learned to trust uh, the Lord. It's there where he learned obedience. Uh, it is there where he learned to live for God and honor the Lord in spite of his circumstances. It is through that enemy chasing him around. That's where David learns faith. That's where David learns obedience. That's where David learns how to pray. That's where David learns all that he learns. It was not with his friend Jonathan. It was while his enemy was chasing him around. And God, while he's laid up in a cave, scared for his life. That's where God does his greatest work in David's life preparing him to be the great king of Israel. Listen, God didn't use a friend. God used an enemy. Right. Right. That's right. That's why the Lord is very careful to tell us how to treat them. Because we're going to need them. Yeah. I think about the three Hebrew boys. They're by way of righteousness, they refuse to bow. Yeah to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Somebody didn't like them, went and ragged them out to the king. That king is their enemy. Mm -hmm. He said, you're going to bow? I'm going to throw you in this fire. Yeah. <coughs> Those boys said, king, the Lord's able to deliver us, but even if he don't, we ain't about them. King said, bind them hand and foot and toss them into the fire. And while in the fire, they got to see the pre-incarnate Lord Jesus Christ walking around the fire with them. You know who's responsible for allowing those boys to get a glimpse of Jesus? It's their enemies. It's the one who led them out. It's King Nebuchadnezzar. God used their enemies to get them in the fire. And listen to me. Once they got in the fire, they got a glimpse of our Savior and got to enjoy fellowship with Him. They got to enjoy a miracle. They got to experience something. Nobody in the Old Testament got to experience their fellowshipping with the future Savior 
of this world. The flames had no hurt. But God gives them a glimpse. When those boys come out of the fire, they're not talking about Nebuchadnezzar. They're talking about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, did you see him? Man, I did. Man, that's the Lord. I know. Right. Can you believe it? I thought we was goners for sure. I turned around and there stands the Lord. I believe this. They might have went to Nebuchadnezzar and shook his hand and said, thank you. Because you were my enemy, I got to experience something that nobody else got to experience. Yeah. Tonight, you better love your enemies. You better do good to them. You better pray for them. Because God's going to use them in your life. I remember many years ago, I was preaching in Tennessee. And I preached every morning. They asked me to, to preach every morning, so I did. And at one of the night services, maybe Tuesday night, I was sitting on a pew. And a gentleman got up to preach. And about halfway into his message, he started taking shots at me. I knew it. Everybody else in the building knew it. And you said, what'd you do? I smiled and never said a word. Right. When we got done, a dear preacher friend of mine said, you know that guy was taking shots at you? I said, I do. He said, tomorrow morning when I got up, I'd cut his head off. I said, nah. He said, well, I'm just telling you, if that was me, I'd get up and cut his head off, and I'd, I'd tell, I'd, I, I, would, I would blister him, and he'd, he'd know that I wasn't going to put up with that. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. He said, why not? I said, one, I don't want to tear this man's meeting up over a personal vendetta. Right. It's not my responsibility. Because right. if I get up and shoot at him, one of his buddies is going to get up and shoot at me, and then you are going to get up and shoot at him. And I said, we'll tear this man's meat all to pieces. I ain't doing that. Yeah. Finally, he said, well, whatever. The next morning rolls around. They come to the platform. I stand up. And I looked right at that brother, and this is what I said. And how many of y'all were here last night? Everybody raised their hand. I said, uh, didn't that brother and called his name? I said, didn't he do a wonderful job? Amen. I said, my soul, what a blessing. And so I looked him right in the face from the pulpit and I said, thank you, brother. You helped me last night. Amen. I really appreciate the message. I said, man, that's wonderful. And I took 10 minutes with the mic and bright on it. As I watched, as he sat over there, at first he was like this. Then he was like this. That's right. Then he was like this. And I bright on him for 10 solid minutes. Everybody knew what he'd said. Everybody heard him taking shots at me. And I bragged on him. I finally take my Bible and start to preach when I do. I get about 15 minutes into it. And pow. That thing broke out. Amen. People got to weeping, got to crying, got to coming to the altar. God got to blessing. God got to moving. I didn't even finish my message. I preached like 22 minutes. And as I stood back and watched as God was moving and God was a blessing and God was a helping, this is the thought that hit me. Take good care of your enemies. Amen. You're going to need them. Amen. And God honored the, the, my behavior. If I got up and took a shot at him, I, it would have hurt me. It would have hurt him. It would have hurt the meeting. But I'm reminded of what my Savior said uh, to love them, pray for them, uh, be good to them, lend to them, and love on them. And so that's what I did. Even though my flesh didn't like it, even though I was not happy with it, I thought I'm going to do what the Lord tells me to do when it comes to how to treat my enemies. And when I did, God blessed it and God honored it. Amen. That's right. You can't beat this book. not the only time. That's right. If you get up and preach, especially if God uses you, people get jealous. Other preachers get jealous. Not all of them. And so sometimes, in order to make themselves feel better, they feel like they have to take a shot at you. Yeah. Amen. But what I've learned is this. 
This is what I do. First thing I do when I get back to my room, I say, Lord, is there any truth to what they said? Amen. If there is, I get right with God over it and apologize. It ain't always an attack. Sometimes God will use your enemies to make you better. Right. And so I say, is there any truth into what they said? If there's not, I ignore it. When asked about any particular preacher who's done that to me, this is what I say. Oh man, he's a good brother. He's a tremendous preacher. Yeah. And God, without fail, has honored him. Instead of trying to fight and argue and try to get the upper hand with your enemy, why don't you swallow your pride? Why don't you be kind? Why don't you love them? Why don't you brag on them? Why don't you encourage them? Uh, listen, instead of running them down all over the uh, creation, instead of calling everybody you know, and let me tell you about what so-and-so did to me, hear me tonight, you ought to love them, uh, pray for them, and, you, and be good to them. God's using them in your life. Right. Amen. Yeah. You said, well, so and so said, well, love them anyway. Right. Amen. And bless your heart like you ain't never said nothing about nobody. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Don't be a hypocrite. Yeah. If it's okay for you to do it, don't get mad when somebody does it to you. think about those three Hebrew boys. I think about Daniel. Those guys plotted against him. They did everything in the world to destroy him. If they had had their way, when he went to the lion's den, he'd have been chewed up and spit out. They'd have been happy as a clam. You know what Daniel does? He ignores his enemies. He goes and prays. Loves the Lord. Keeps continuing on living for God. I know folks that if they say something bad about you, or if they talk about you, or if you hear something about you, it'll mess you up so bad you won't even read your Bible for three days. Right. Not Daniel. Daniel went on prayed anyway. God supernaturally protects Daniel. But when it came time for his enemies to be thrown into the fiery uh, into the lion's den, you know what happened? God took care of. God did not call you or I to revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He called us to serve and labor for Him. Amen. Tonight, have I had, do I have enemies? Yeah, I do. I don't have any enemies. There's a bunch of folks out there that are my enemies, but I don't have any. I ain't mad at nobody. I ain't taking a shot at nobody. Yeah. I ain't against nobody. I don't have an enemy in the world. Now, there's a bunch of folks out there that are my enemies. We've had folks leave our church, say all manner of stuff. Right. But I'm making a point. I'm not going to get up here and spend this time trying to justify myself right. or to shoot at somebody else. That's right. Amen. That, this ain't the time for that. Amen. This ain't the place for that. Yeah. Listen, you know what it does? You folks come in looking to be fed from the Word of God. Amen. You came in looking to hear from the Lord. Yeah. And if all I do is get up and shoot at my enemies, that's not feeding you. That ain't helping you. That ain't blessing you. Uh, but hear me. So you know what I do? I set that junk aside, get up and preach a Bible, and let the Lord worry about my enemies. Amen. I think about our Savior. Amen. Do you know how Jesus got to the cross? His enemies. Yeah. The Pharisees hated him. They set a plot and a plan in motion, and they, they're the responsible for his arrest. When he comes out to the crowd, and you know what they say? Those Pharisees told the crowd, said, Don't, don't, don't ask for Jesus, ask for Barabbas. Yeah. Pilate comes out and said, I release one person uh, this time. You tell me which one you want. And with one accord, they all said, give us Barabbas yeah. and keep Jesus. Do you know why they did that? Because of those enemies of the Lord, the Pharisees. Right. Do you know how Jesus got to the cross? He had an enemy named Judas yeah. who sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. Now tonight, 
if anybody should have been free from enemies, it was Jesus. Yeah. Literally perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know that also. Well, you think you're perfect. Well, yeah, he is. Right. You couldn't say that to Jesus. That's right. Well, I like so so. They think they're perfect. Well, they couldn't say that about Jesus because he was. Yeah. If anybody shouldn't have had any enemies, it should have been the same. But even the perfect man, sinless man, if he had enemies, what makes you think you're getting away without gaining a few enemies? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know how Jesus got into the perfect will of God and ended up on the cross? Because of his enemies. Yeah. If Judas don't betray him, if the Pharisees don't plot against him, you and I, we're not even saved. Right. Yeah. Now, Jesus is not just telling you something that he wants you to do. He proves what he tells us in Luke 6. When, when while, while they are nailing him to the cross, you know what he cries? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they right. do. Yeah. He's praying for his enemies. Not two weeks after they heard him, while they're nailing him to the cross, right. he's praying for them. Yeah. Yeah. You better learn to take good care of your enemies. You're going to need them. Amen. The list could go on and on and on of all of the enemies that God used to promote and propel his people into the perfect will of God. Hear me tonight. You say so and so don't like me. Good. Pray for them. Be good to them. Love them. And then lend to them. And do everything you can to bless them. And God will honor you. And God will convict them. I've heard two preachers that were into it. I, I, one preacher thought this preacher didn't like it. And so he gets up and he says something about this preacher. And this preacher comes after the service, walks over to him, hugs his neck and says, Preacher, I love you. That was a wonderful sermon. When he did it, the first preacher who, who took the shot at him began to weep and cry and squall. And he said, I thought you didn't like me. He said, Brother, I ain't got nothing against you. I love you. Amen. And that preacher took, that first preacher said, I'm, I'm sorry. Amen. And took him to the altar and prayed over him and wept Amen. as he prayed. Amen. Somebody's got to have some humility. Yeah. Somebody's got to be willing to ignore the wrongs, where ignore the slights, ignore the harsh words, ignore the rumors, ignore the gossip. I was like what Ed Maccabee used to say. Ed Maccabee was Sidney Weaver's uh, pastor. Uh, Brother Ed, phenomenal, phenomenal preacher. It's dead in glory now. He said this. He said, I heard somebody said something about me. So I called uh, the person I heard it from. And they said, well, I heard it from so-and-so. He said, so I called them. And they said, I heard it from so-and-so. He said, I called them. He said, I spent the entire day on the phone tracking it down. When I finally got to the person who started it, you know what I found? A liar. Yeah, right. Yeah. He said, I heard you said it. Why, well, preacher? I wouldn't dare. He yeah. said, I know they said it. He said, when I hung up the phone, the Lord said, you've wasted a whole day just to catch up with a liar. Yeah. If they lie on you, do you not think they would lie to you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And Ed McAbee said, I learned a great lesson that day. When people say stuff, I just ignore it and go on. Amen. Can I be honest? I know there's folks that's like our church that's lied on me, flat out lied. I mean, not within a million miles of the truth. You say, what do you do? Do you get up in the pulpit and blast them? No. I pray for them. Ask the Lord to have mercy on them. Yeah. Ask the Lord to help them. And if they'd have walked in the back door, I'd hug their neck and said, hey, good to see you. You better learn to take good care of your enemies. You're going to need them. God is going to use those people to get you in the perfect will of God. Amen. As Jesus is suffering, bleeding, and dying on the cross, you know who's responsible? Judas and the Pharisees. Both of them enemies of our Savior. Amen. God uses our enemies to get us where He wants us. Yeah. You say, I got enemies. Well, good. As long as you got enemies by the way of righteousness. Right. 
Now, if you hurt somebody and done somebody wrong, you got an enemy. Well, that's on you. You need to talk to them and the Lord about that. Right. But if you're doing right and people hate you, that ain't your problem. Right. You love them. You pray for them. You be good to them. Amen. If I know I have an enemy, if I go off to preach somewhere and I know somebody don't like me, the first thing I do is run over there and hug their neck. Amen. And say, hey, brother, good to see you. Looking forward to hearing you preach. You say, do you mean it? Yeah. You might be my enemy, but I refuse to be yours. Amen. My enemies cannot stop me from loving them. <coughs> Because I found this truth that God honors. When we do what He tells us to do in His Word, God honors it. Amen. So tonight I ask you this is I get a piano player. You got enemies tonight? You got people that don't like you? You got people that set all manner of evil against you? You got people who have hurt you, wronged you, mistreated yeah. you, and you really just try to be a blessing? If you do. You're in wonderful company. Joseph, David, the three Hebrew boys, Daniel, and our Savior. I dare say you're in pretty good company. Oh, yeah. Now tonight, you'll have to treat them like, do you realize Joseph could have slaughtered his brethren? He was the right hand of Pharaoh. He was a governor over all the land. All he had to do was snap his fingers and they took their heads off. Yeah. But Joseph realized it was because of his enemies that he was where he was. Tonight, you better learn to take good care of your enemies. Love them. Pray for them. Rejoice. Because if God gives you an enemy, he's going to use them to get you where he wants you. Take good care of your enemies. You're going to need them as we stand. Father, we love you. Now, Father, tonight, this message, it's easy preaching, but it's hard living. And so, Lord, I pray you would help us through the power of the Holy Ghost to forgive our enemies. Help us to love them, pray for them. Help us to do good to them. Help us not to gossip about them or run them down. Lord, help us to follow your commands and how we treat our enemies. Lord, I pray that if there be any bitterness or hatred or envy or jealousy or any of that junk in our hearts, I pray you get that stuff out. Lord, the devil don't have to get us out robbing banks to mess us up. All he's got to do is get hard feelings stuck down in our hearts. That's enough to cut us off from the blessings of God. And so, Father, tonight I pray you would help us to do what you command. Help us to love them, pray for them. Help us to be good to them. Help us to bless them. Lord, we're never more like Jesus than when we're good to our enemy. So, Father, I pray you give us the right mindset. I pray you give us the right heart. Lord, I pray you'd help us to follow you and love our enemy. It ain't easy, Lord. In this place, well, it's no good thing. It ain't easy. But Lord, you're able, Lord, to help us to follow you. So Lord, I pray if there be uh, somebody in here who's got issues or problems or with somebody. Lord, I pray you'd touch and help. Pray to have mercy on them. Lord, I pray you'd help them to love their enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use us. Lord, we'll thank you. We'll pray. Help us take good care of our enemies. We don't need them. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You need to come. Maybe you got an enemy. Be no better thing than to come and pray for them. Be no better thing than to try to take them before the Lord and lift them up. See, here's what I've learned. You can't hate folk you pray for. God won't let you. You say, I hate so-and-so. Start praying for them. God will start dealing with your heart. Somebody hurts me, wrongs me, and I do, I immediately buckle down and start praying for them. And in just a little while, the Lord begins to turn my heart. So I love them. You can't hate folks you pray for. So tonight, if you've got an enemy, rejoice!
leap for joy. God's trying to promote you. Do something. All hearts and minds clear. We're going to bow our heads. Brother Robin, if you would, this one.